However, regardless of factoring, if I'm asking you guys to find the x-intercepts, you guys know the first thing that you guys need to be able to do to find the x-intercept is set your f of x or your y equal to 0. So if you're dealing with a function, you're going to set your f of x equal to 0. If you're dealing with an equation, you're going to set y equal to 0. Okay. Now, let's go through what we've learned, though. Okay. What you say? What'd you say? All right, let's go through what you know. The first example, I showed you guys what we called the square root method. Now, using the square root method, that was only when we had one x term. Do we only have one x term? No. No, so we can't use the square root method. The next one was we used factoring our GCF. Now, GCF, they all had to share a term. Do all of these share an x? No, they don't. Do they all share a common number? Well, except for one, right? But factoring out one's not going to help us. So we can't use factoring out the GCF. Sorry. Um, so the last thing is what we need to do is we need to be able to, well, then how can we factor out a trinomial? And again, when I'm saying factoring, what I'm saying is I want to rewrite this as a multiplication problem, right? That's what factoring is saying, rewrite it as multiplication. So to do that, um, we're just going to call this the diamond method. Yes. The diamonds. Oh no. Yes. Or really just the x-axis. Okay? Now, now the thing that gets most students a lot mixed up is not having the correct A, B, and C. So when you guys are doing that's a B. So when you guys have an equation, let's say it's f of x equals Is that multiplication? Right here, or what do you mean? Yeah, this is a multiplication symbol. That's a dot representing, uh, no. This is a dot representing multiplication. This is an addition symbol representing addition. OK, so if you guys remember, when we, were, when we were learning how to graph, when we learned how to graph standard form, I showed you guys the standard form of, an, of a quadratic, which was f of x or y equals, we either were ax squared plus bx plus c. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. And remember, to find the axis of symmetry, we had, to, we had to identify what was a, what was b, oh, yeah. right? So let's do that again. In this case, a is um, you can say a is equal to, what is the number in front of x? 1. What is b? Seven. Seven. Negative, seven. Seven. Negative 7. And c is 6. six. Does everybody agree with me on this? We've done very little math, if any math at all. right? All we've done is labeled our problem. Very quick, Jake. So now, what, the reason why I wrote this in there is because I want you guys to have this thing memorized so that you can label in 6, put 6 up where the C is, and put negative 7 where the B is. And then you have to find either something that they yeah. buy back so when what this little thing represents here is the reason why I put the dot and the addition symbol is because the dot represents what two numbers multiplied by each other. What two numbers multiplied by each other are going to multiply to give us 6. And then of those, add to give us negative 7. So what I'd like to do is we take the number 6 and we write down all the numbers that multiply to give us 6. Okay, so we have three times one and three times two. Now, six times one and three times two. Yes. That was B. Yep, B is going to go right there. So now, remember, guys, when you're looking at your factors, Mario. Um, what we want to do is identify, remember factors, 6 times 1 gives you 6, as well as negative 6 times negative 1. And I like the negatives because they have to add to give us negative 7. So is it possible for positive numbers to add to give you negative 7? No. But it, it is possible for all my factors to be negative. 
So therefore, I make all my, neg all my factors negative. And when I do that, you guys can see that the only two factors that multiply to give me positive 6, add to give me negative 7, are negative 6 and negative 1. Okay. Again, we still have not written our problem as a product yet. However, we have 0 equals. Now, I will show you basically what you're going to do is, oh man. Basically, what we're going to do is take each one of these factors, and I'll explain this a little bit more in detail um, after this video. But basically, what we do is we take each of these numbers, and we write them in as part of our binomials. So we have a binomial times another binomial. And then, now do we, ha now do we have a product that's equal to 0? Yes, and that's, that's exactly what we want, is a product equal to 0. So we have x minus 6 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. x equals 6, x equals 1. And that is your two answers. OK? Now, some of you might.